So I'm going to tell you how you can pretty much guarantee that you will achieve your goal of learning how to code. And no, you don't need to have a genius level IQ, you don't need to major in computer science, and you don't need to be good at math. Fortunately, there are some techniques that you can internalize that will make the seemingly insurmountable task of learning how to code easier than you ever imagined. So riddle me this, what is the problem that most beginners face when learning how to code? Whether you know it or not, you yourself have probably encountered this very same problem. And if you haven't yet encountered this problem, you will encounter it at some point in your journey. So there's lots of higher level information out there about how to learn how to code. Things like starting with Harvard CS50 course and learning one programming language deeply. And all of these are very good pieces of advice, but none of them actually tell you how to learn how to code. It seems that most of us that have learned how to code kind of just stumbled into it somehow. But when I was learning how to code, I actually paid very close attention to the things that I did to actually bridge the gap between understanding a programming language's syntax and actually being able to build things using that programming language. And if you've learned some programming language's syntax, you know that knowing syntax isn't even half of the puzzle. So obviously, you're going to have to learn some syntax and you're going to have to pick a language. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I recommend that you start with Python. If you've already started with a different programming language, that's okay, but if you haven't yet started with any programming language, just start with Python. So in my opinion, you only need to know five things to actually start getting your hands dirty and writing code. And those things are variables, functions, for loops, arrays, and maps. And in the beginning, you don't need to know the details about the underlying data structures or performance or any of that. You really only need to learn how to use these things and essentially what they do in a very general sense. So the first piece of advice that I'm actually going to give you is don't go out and buy some textbook on a programming language. That's only going to do two things. It's going to discourage you and it's going to bore the crap out of you. These textbooks are written by experienced engineers and and one thing about experienced engineers is that most of them don't remember what it was like to actually learn all of this stuff from zero. There will come a time when you can understand these types of resources, but the beginning stages most likely won't be that time. We're going to save a bunch of time by skipping buying an entire textbook on a programming language. So try to find an alternative resource to learning those five things. And if you really have a hard time finding a resource to learn those five things, just leave a comment in the comment section and I'll make a video on those five things specifically. Now, after learning these five things, you'll find that you're in limbo because although you've learned some syntax, you still won't have a enough knowledge to compose those syntactical building blocks into something tangible. So around this time, people start to seek the aid of tutorials to help them to build things. Now at this point is where most beginners start to make the critical mistake. So I need to explain something that is very important to understand. A very large part of coding, a much larger part than understanding a programming language's syntax, is thinking. The syntax of a programming language is just a way to express your thoughts. So given a problem that we want to solve, what do we do? We think of a way to solve that problem. In fact, we can't even start coding until we know what we're going to do to solve that problem, right? And once you do start coding, you've already solved that problem in your mind. You're just expressing the solution to that problem using the tools provided by the programming language. So with all of that in mind, the bulk of coding is actually thinking. It's not writing out the syntax. So incorporating that understanding into the phase of following along with tutorials what do you think is missing from following along with tutorials? You see, many beginners that are just learning how to code end up getting sucked into this perpetual tutorial wonderland. Like they'll literally continuously follow along with tutorial after tutorial and they never get to a point where they can actually build things on their own because that's not the skill set that they're training. They're just practicing following along with somebody else's tutorial. And in that particular situation, who do you think is doing all of the thinking? Now remember, thinking and solving problems is the bulk of coding. 
actually writing the code is literally what you do after you've already solved the problem. So if you're continuously following along with tutorials, you're never actually training that muscle where you're actually thinking on your own and solving problems on your own. And this is the biggest mistake that most beginners make when learning how to code. They never take the training wheels off. So how do we actually solve that? So because the bulk of what it is to know how to code is focused on thinking, you will notice something very interesting when you're actually following along with tutorials. If you've ever followed along with a tutorial and you accidentally broke something or you accidentally skipped a step because you weren't paying attention during that time when you were actually trying to figure out how to get the application to the state that it was supposed to be at you were actually exercising the muscle that is going to ultimately result in you knowing how to code so what does that mean and how can we implement some sort of technique so that we're always exercising this muscle well that almost means that you want to intentionally break the application when you're following along with the tutorial and what i'm going to suggest isn't really far off from that so i'm going to introduce you to a technique that i like to call the half-assed approach to following along with coding tutorials. This approach involves following a video tutorial up until a point where you think that you can do something on your own. So if you're watching a tutorial and the creator lets the viewer know what the next step is, if that step seems like something that you might be able to try on your own, you want to pause the video and attempt to do that part on your own. And this is an iterative process, so if you go through 10 coding tutorials, each consecutive tutorial should require less and less of your attention until eventually you will have completely weaned yourself off of coding tutorials altogether. And also another thing, you shouldn't get discouraged if you actually break one of these applications when you're following along with these tutorials. You should actually celebrate because during those times when you're trying to debug and figure out what you broke while following along with this tutorial, you're going to learn so much that it's going to be ridiculous. Like. It's gonna feel like shit when you're doing it, but you're actually going to be learning a lot while going through that process. Now, the next technique is the most important because this technique is going to ensure that you don't get discouraged to the point that you want to quit, therefore guaranteeing that you will achieve your goal of learning how to code. So many people, myself included, when I first started, have a bunch of preconceived notions about learning how to code, most of which are false. And this is exacerbated by the spread of misinformation, mostly by people that aren't even even part of this community. You'll hear things like coding is easy and a toddler can learn how to code. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, you'll hear things like you need to be good at math to learn how to code and that coders have like genius level IQs. And all of these are false by the way, but whether you know it or not, these things are having an impact on your thoughts when learning how to code. For example, in my case, I kind of believed the thing about needing to be good at math to learn how to code. And that led me to assume that many things were much more difficult than they actually were. And that actually had a negative impact on me when I was learning how to code because there would be times where I would hit a roadblock because I couldn't understand something and I would assume that the reason that I couldn't understand that thing was because I didn't have the proper educational background. This would in turn lead me to just give up on understanding that particular thing, which almost resulted in me giving up on trying to learn how to code altogether. But once I did start to overcome more and more of these blocks, I started to notice a pattern. And that is that everything surrounding the topic of learning how to code is easier than you think. Now that doesn't mean that a toddler can learn how to code, but that does mean that any obstacle that you encounter when learning how to code any roadblock or challenge is going to initially feel too difficult or out of reach for you. But this is a delusion. And once I started to realize this, roadblocks became less scary to me. I started to understand inherently that if I am persistent, I will come to understand that particular thing. And this sort of shift in your understanding is going to have a substantial impact on your ability to continue when things become discouraging or tough. 
So just always remember that everything surrounding the subject of learning how to code is easier than you think. So don't ever assume that your understanding of something is out of reach for you. Now, if you have any questions or you want me to elaborate on anything that I've mentioned here, feel free to leave a comment. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one.